At one point, C. Dolores Tucker was basically, you know, staging a campaign against hip hop, against gangster rap. Mm -hmm. And wasn't the Ghetto Boys included in that? Yeah. Okay. Tupac was sort of the main target of that. But the Ghetto Boys was included with a, a few other artists as well, right? Well, you know, they was targeting everybody. You know, everybody that was, you know, hot at that time. Really, Ghetto Boys, they were after us before Tupac. You know, you got to, oh, okay. you know, we were before Tupac. So, you know, they came after us in like 89, 90 is when they, they, they came after us. I didn't think, I, I think they came after Pac somewhere around 92 or something like that. But, right. yeah, they were trying to get at us and two live crew way back in like 90. Right, because, I, I mean, Tupac responded. Yeah. And I, I think that's what brought a lot of energy into that whole, Yeah, you know, that whole situation. You know, Dolores Tucker, you a motherfucker. Like, and, you instead know Instead of I mean? trying to help a brother, you destroy a brother. Yeah, exactly. Bill Clinton, Mr. Bob Doe, you too old to understand the way the game so go. So I right. got to hit you with the hot tracks. See, I think a lot of people take this freedom of speech thing in music and hip hop in particular for granted, not knowing that 25, 30 years ago, there was really, things were on the brink of actual censorship. Mm -hmm. Where two live crew, you know, police would go into record stores and literally pull two live crew records off the shelves. People got arrested for selling Two Live Crew music and Ghetto Boys music. Arrested. Oh, so, ghetto, oh, so that happened to Ghetto Boys also? Yeah, like people were like, the people who's, who were at the stores, the clerks, they were getting arrested for selling the music if they tried to sell the music. They used to keep our music behind the counter. Hmm. And so, yeah, all of that, that labeling, you know, with the, the whole, when you see the parental advisory sticker, you know, you can thank, you know, Two Live Crew and Ghetto Boys for that. NWA too, you know, you can thank us. <laughs> and Ice-T and Too Short. Everybody was really like, they were really coming after anybody that was, that had like, uh, I would say coarse music, you know, like reality rap, man. You know, they tried to frame it as gangster because they wanted to be able to be disrespectful to us and, and try to marginalize us. And so that's why they tried to frame it as gangster. And we fought the gangster, um, we, we fought that, that image or, or that, 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 that term for a long time. Every time they try to throw it out, no, it's reality rap. That's what it is. Because the minute you start saying gangster, if they do something to you, they say, well, you know, if it's gangster and gangsters are bad people. And so bad people need to be arrested and accosted and, and you know, they need to be, uh, harassed by the police and if they the police do that then the police is doing a job you know for the community so we always fought those labels that's why it's very important when people try to label you you know you make sure that you correct them if you don't agree with the label yeah I feel you I feel you but gangster rap is still <laughs> that term is still around yeah, it's still around, but like I say, I know what it means. I know what they're trying to say, but I still don't answer to it. Fair enough. Um, did you and Tupac have a relationship? Because I know that, you know, Scarface and Tupac were real cool. No, nah, I'm going to tell you about me and Tupac, though. You know, the closest, me and Tupac never even met. But I was going into uh, Ichabon Records, Ichabon Records in Georgia. And I think it was in Macon. Macon. And they owed me some money. So this was back in the days you could hop on the plane and you didn't have to buy your tickets in advance and they wouldn't search you down and all that stuff. You could put your guns on, you could check your guns on the plane. So I went down there on the plane. Uh, I'm not going to really get detailed with it. It's for the book. But uh, I went down there with some people. And, you know, I asked for my check. You know, I told him, write the check and, uh, you know, it better not bounce, you know. And so I walked out of there with my money because they had been avoiding me, you know. 
he had been avoiding me, wouldn't take my call. So anyway, I walked out of there with check. And as I was leaving, uh, this, this girl who worked there walked up to me. She said, I'm glad you did that because Tupac just left here and he was throwing stuff around. Uh, I'm just so glad you did that. So Tupac, they owed Pac some money. So I had missed Pac by 30 minutes. Mm. Yeah.